Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This video will be about fragments, which are kind of a modular section of an activity. So you can think of them as UI components that you can easily reuse. Fragments have their own life cycle and are basically more lightweight than activities. And there is always an activity that hosts one or more fragments. And the fragments are affected by the activity's life cycle. We can either create a static fragment that is always the same in our activity, or we are able to have a container in which we can dynamically add, replace and remove fragments. And I will show you both options in this video. Let's start by creating our layout for our activity file. I want to create two buttons here with which we can switch between two different fragments. So let's start by opening a button tag here. Right button, set the layout width to wrap content and the height to. I will set the text of that button to fragment one and the ID of that button to button fragment one and close that tag off. Then we can take our button tag here, copy it and paste it below. Rename the ID to button fragment two and rename the text to fragment two. And now we actually have to add our fragment in our UI code here. We do that by opening a tag and writing fragment. I'll set the layout width to match parent and the layout height to zero dp. And I will give it an ID of fragment. Close that tag off. Then we can go into our design tab and set the constraints for our views. Let's drag that fragment a little bit down here and let's start by constraining the buttons. I'll take that fragment one button, constrain the left to the parent left, the top to the parent top, this button's left to this button's right and the top to the parent top. Then we can select those two buttons, right click, chains, create horizontal chain to distribute them evenly and then we can take our fragment Click on those two bars, constrain it horizontally in parent, constrain the top to the button bottom and the bottom to the parent bottom. And currently this fragment is just a gray box because we need to set the contents of it and we haven't done that. And actually in this layout editor this will always stay a gray box but when we run our app it will be replaced with the layout that we defined for that fragment. The next step is to actually create our fragment and such as for activities, each fragment needs its own class and its own layout file. So make sure to go into your Java folder, open your com package and in the package where your main activity is located, right click new fragment below here and I want to create a blank fragment. So click on that. Then we can choose a name for our fragment. In my case, this will just be first fragment because I want to create two fragments in this tutorial and switch between them. The layout name is fragment first, so that's fine. Make sure to select that checkbox here to create that layout file automatically. But also make sure to uncheck those two checkboxes, which are used to implement some more code into our fragment classes that we don't need here. If you have done that, click on finish and Android Studio will automatically create that fragment class and also our fragment first.xml file. Let's go into the text tab in our fragment first.xml file. Remove that text view here and also replace that frame layout with a constraint layout. And then we can add a text view again that just says that we are currently in our first fragment. Let's say, let's set the layout width to wrap content and the height to. I'll set the ID to TV fragment first. And I will set the text of it to, um, let's say first fragment. And let's change the ID to first fragment to TV first fragment. And just actually increase the text size a little bit to 30SP and close that tag off. Then go into the design tab, 
take that text view and constrain it horizontally in parent and vertically in parent. And what a fragment will do now is it will take this layout file here, our fragment first.xml, and set its content to this fragment box here we defined in our main activity um, XML file. So we don't need to create a whole new activity to show a new layout. Instead, we have a section in our activity, which is this gray box, that we can easily replace with different layouts. And that is much more efficient than creating a whole new activity for each layout we have. Let's actually take a look in that first fragment.kt file here, which is our fragment class for that first fragment. Fragment classes also have tons of functions that you can overwrite just as activities have. Here you can see one function that you will see very often, which is on create view. That function's purpose is to inflate our view of that fragment. So it will take our layout file fragment first and return it as a view so that this fragment knows which view it should show. And I told you that fragments have their own life cycle. So there is also an on create function just as for activities. However, the life cycle of fragments is slightly different but they still have an onCreate function that is called initially when that fragment is created. Let's overrate that onCreate function for fragments. What is really important here is that we can't treat a fragments onCreate function like an activities onCreate function. In an activity class, we set the content view in onCreate, but fragments don't do that because they have this onCreate view function which creates that view and this onCreateView function is called after onCreate. So we cannot access the views of a fragment inside of the onCreate function like we could do it for activities. So we couldn't do um, TV first fragment here, which is our text view in our fragment layout. This where well, we, we can write this, but it will crash because this view is not created yet. So in fragments, the view is actually created after on create is called. And if you want to access the fragments views, then you need to override on view created. This function is called when all the views are created. And here you are fine to access TV first fragment and set its text, for example, to hello. But in this example, I will remove that function again. And actually, we can also remove this function on create view because I explained that this function's purpose is to inflate our layout. And we always need that in a fragment class, but there is a much shorter way to do that. So to actually accomplish that same behavior, much shorter, we want to copy that ID of our fragment first XML file, remove that on create view function, and then we can pass that ID in the constructor of the fragment class. So right here, and that will have the exact same behavior and makes our fragment class much shorter. Let's actually now create a second fragment. We can do that very easily by clicking on our first fragment class, pressing Control C to copy it and Control V to paste it again. And I will name this one second fragment. Press enter here and it will create the exact same class for our second fragment. Of course, we need to do the same for our layout file. So click on our fragment first XML, control C, control V, and call it fragment second.xml. Then we can rename our text view in our fragment second XML file to TV second fragment, and rename the text views text to second fragment, and also go into our second fragment.kt file and rename this layout ID to fragment second. So we set the actual layout of our second fragment to our fragment second XML, where we changed that text use text. So we can differentiate between those two fragments. And as I told you, we can either define fragments statically so that we, if we take a look in our activity main.xml, that we always have one single fragment that is always the content of this fragment box or we can set them dynamically in our code so that we can change the content of this box when we click on fragment one button or fragment two buttons to the corresponding fragment. Let's start by setting this fragment boxes content to our first fragment so that it always shows our first fragment and we cannot change it. 
To do that, we need to go into our text tab in our activity main.xml file, scroll down to our fragment tag here, and here we need to attach a name property with the name of our fragment that we want to set into that fragment tag. So write name here, and you can see Android Studio provides us our two fragments that we created, first fragment and second fragment. I want to set it to first fragment initially, and that's actually it. Let's run that app now. And here you can see the gray box disappeared and the content of it was replaced with the layout file of our first fragment. So there's just a text view that says first fragment. But currently this box doesn't change. When we click on those two buttons, because we only set the, the content of that fragment box statically and not dynamically from code. If we want to have such a container in which we are able to replace fragments dynamically at runtime, we can't do it like this with that fragment tag here. Instead, we need to replace that fragment tag with a frame layout. A frame layout is basically just a layout type that is designed to block out an area on the screen to display a single item. So this will just display a single fragment box that we don't see here because this frame layout is just used as a container for that fragment. And we will add that fragment tag at runtime. So you can think of this just as a very simple layout that is used to hold our, our um, fragments. And also make sure to remove that name attribute here and rename our frame layout to FL fragment for frame layout fragment. Now let's jump into our mainactivity.kt file because this is the file where we want to define the logic when to replace our fragments. First, we need to create an instance of our two fragments. So val well, first fragment is equal to first fragment. So just create an instance of that. And we can press control D to duplicate that line and rename it to second fragment. And this is of course a second fragment. And now because we want to replace the content of our frame layout with either our first or second fragment, we need to use what is called a fragment transaction. And we do that by writing support fragment manager dot begin transaction dot apply, which is a Kotlin scope function again. So we can always directly refer to support fragment manager dot begin transaction. Inside of that apply block, we can write replace. This replace means that we want to replace this container view ID. So we need to provide an ID of a container, which is our frame layout. And in this container, we want to replace the current fragment with another fragment. Currently, we don't have a fragment in that container but we can still use the replace function, then it will just initially add that fragment that we define here in the second parameter. Let's provide that ID for our container, which is r.id.fl fragment. And now we can choose a fragment that is initially set to our container. So I will just pass first fragment here and just calling replace is not enough in a fragment transaction we also need to call commit afterwards to actually apply those changes to our transaction. And afterwards, after we call commit, the fragment, first fragment is actually visible in our container FL fragment. So that piece of code is now used to set the initial fragment to our container, but we also want to add the possibility to click on our buttons and change the fragment to the corresponding fragment. So let's write button fragment one that was set on click listener. And here we can actually copy that piece of code and paste it. And it's actually the exact same because when we click on that button fragment one here, we want to have exactly that behavior that we want to replace the current fragment with first fragment. If we copy that whole block here, paste it below, change that to button fragment two. Then if we want to click on that fragment button two, then we want to replace that current fragment, of course, not with our first fragment, 
but with our second fragment. So just replace this one. And if we now run our app again, then you can see at first it looks the exact same as it did before when we set that fragment layout statically. But if we now click on fragment two on that button, then our layout gets replaced with the layout of our second fragment. And if we click on fragment one again, then it gets replaced with the first fragment layout again. But what is important now that you should know is when we click on that back arrow here, then our activity will close because those fragments currently don't have their own stack. So whenever we replace such a fragment here, then we don't push that fragment on top of the fragment or activity stack. So we can navigate back with the back arrow to the fragments we navigated to previously. To actually change that, we can call the add to back stack function after the replace function. And this takes a name as a parameter to later um, detect which fragment we pushed on that back stack. So to give this fragment a unique name on our back stack, but we don't need to provide that parameter. We can also just pass null if we don't care about the name. So I don't care about the name here. And then we can copy that line and paste it in our button fragment two, um, fragment transaction two. And if we now run that app again and click on um, fragment two, for example, then we open that second fragment. But when we now click on that back arrow, then we navigate back to our first fragment because our fragment two was pushed onto that fragment stack. And when we click on that back arrow, the top item of that stack is popped and the now current fragment of our container is the fragment that was that is now on the top of that stack. So if we would now click on back, then our app would close because that stack is empty. And that's it what I wanted to show you in this video. I hope this was helpful for you. If so, please leave a like and comment below. Also, if there is anything you didn't understand, then don't mind asking your questions in the comments. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.